Hey, hey, what's going on, San Diego? Thanks so much for tuning in. This is San Diego Market Movers coming to you live on Real Talk San Diego. I'm Claire McKee, and my partner in crime, as always, Justin Cody Warden, is here with us. Hey, with the hey, finger guns. That's my guns. new thing. That is so my new thing. I'm doing it every time. Every time you do it, I just feel compelled to do it back. So we'll just roll with it. Um, and we've got a great show for you today, as always. But today we are joined by a husband and wife duo in real estate, and that is Deva and Eric Edelman. Hi, Hi. there. Hi. Hi, guys. So nice to have you here. Thank you. Are you ready to have some fun today? Sure. Yes. Absolutely. This isn't some serious show. Like, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to share a little bit about you guys personally so people can really get to know you. And then we'll talk a little bit about business later. So uh, we're going to get started. But if you are watching live with us, be sure to click follow on the live feed so you can be notified every time we go live. And we would love to interact with you, our live audience. So feel free to share this video, drop us a comment, uh, or ask us a question. And we will get back to you during this live broadcast. So. First rite of passage on the show, you guys. You must share a fun fact about yourself. <laughs> Dave, I'll start with you. What do you have? Okay, well, I love to raise monarch butterflies. Um, so that's what? something I've been doing for the past few years in the, in the backyard. A couple years ago, Eric was complaining to me that he never sees any monarch butterflies anymore. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, let's see what we can do. So Get the kids and out. I, yeah, we went to the nursery. We bought a bunch of milkweed. And the thing is that the butterflies, the caterpillars are so hungry, you have to keep buying more and more milkweed. So I would keep running to the nursery and getting emergency milkweed, and that's no like, way. yeah, it's kind of a big project. But last year we released 203 monarch butterflies. What? So, yep, we're, yep, they're about to come back again this year, so we're hoping to do even more this time. Oh my gosh. So you, where do you buy the caterpillars? Oh, they, well, just, they just show they up. Show up Real, wild. They just yeah, know, the wild like ones. you just bring yeah. the milk, what did you say? Milkweed, milkweed. Yeah. that's yeah. the milkweed? only thing that um, monarch caterpillars can use to eat. Get um, out of town. So the wild monarchs just come in, they lay the eggs, and I'll bring them into the house and hatch them and then we have an outdoor enclosure where they live and they stay safe and oh, once they um, hatch as butterflies we'll release them that is the coolest this thing. is amazing that is, is the coolest thing ever I go to the zoo <laughs> every year for the butterfly <laughs> you don't need to do that no you I have friends now house. call yeah. the Edelmans and yeah. there you go so is this Over. seasonal is it like a seasonal thing yes they yeah. um, they spend a lot of the winter time up in like Santa Barbara and the area around there mm. and then they should be coming back anytime now so we're waiting for them to come we're talking back about the butterflies obviously because the worm yeah. or the caterpillars oh, aren't going there yeah no they they pretty much stay put on the one plant but yeah they should be back any time now, so we're ready for them. Oh, oh. my So I have gosh. to ask you a question. So I just went to Palm Springs this past weekend, and when I was driving back, obviously everyone's infatuated with all the flowers that are everywhere. But when I was driving, and I, they might not have been butterflies. No, they are. They are. They are they butterflies? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Like, They're everywhere. They are. It was I, Unfortunately, it was kind of disgusting because my yeah. car is yeah, disgusting right now. But I was blown away. Like, for miles and miles and miles, like, there were just swarms of Butterflies. They're painted, painted lady ladies, butterflies, yeah. okay. and they are. They spent the winter in Mexico, and now they're traveling up to Oregon. So. But didn't the isn't the whole like controversy with the butterflies right now that because of the cold weather and like the polar vortex we've been having, they're hanging out here because they couldn't go up north yet? Is that a myth, or is that just is this know. normal? Um, there's a lot going on with the butterflies now, and okay. people are concerned about you yeah. know different global yeah. warming things and how it's affecting them. But I certainly haven't seen this many around here that I can remember at all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. I thought I was seeing things. I no, was like, no, oh. no. And no, I was like, kinda, thing. so I was driving, so I'm like, Whoa, like, like, <laughs> like, oh no, there's another. And my wife's just sitting there going, like, What is wrong with you? And I'm like, Look what's happening. She's not paying attention. But <laughs> butterflies incredible. and bumblebees. Those are the two most important things impacted mm. by the global warming crisis, yeah. right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah That's for right. sure. We yeah. actually had a butterfly release at our wedding, and we released painted ladies, the same oh kind you're seeing. Yeah. And that was, you know, 20 years ago. But right. every time I see these butterflies, it reminds me of that. Can we talk wow. about how your husband was like, I want to see some more monarch, monarch butterflies. And you're like, yeah, I got you. I'll make it happen. <laughs> yeah, right? like, yeah, I got this. That is so <laughs> cool. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm always saying stuff like that. And she's like, you're just not looking. Or, you yeah. know, she, I'm, I'm always saying crazy stuff that she, <laughs> you know, doesn't necessarily agree with, but always is uh, ready to ready to prove me wrong or fulfill my uh, my missing desire. I love desire that. There. That, that is, is so sweet. Like I love that so much. I'm not really sure how you're going to follow that fun fact, Eric. I know. But. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you have for us? Well, um, one of the, the the probably the the funnest thing that I like to do. I've I've been playing guitar since I was a 13 year old boy, and so I like to play electric guitar and I like to. Uh, get out my soldering iron and work on my vintage amplifier okay. and, and guitar. Oh. So that's, that's kind of what I do for, uh, for fun. If you had to like play one song for the rest of your life, what are you going to play? Like, what's your go-to? Oh, boy. Yeah, I know. That's deep. Oh, that's a, that's a tough question. 
I mean, probably something by either Pink Floyd or Led Zeppelin or Rush okay. or not something. Not Stairway like. to Heaven, though. No, right? not Stairway <laughs> to Heaven. Probably Over the Hills and Far Away by okay, Led Zeppelin. Okay, yeah, there's some sick riffs. I mean, Sorry, stairway, I just had to ask, stairway to Heaven so long. I mean, you can just play it's, that song <laughs> and it won't end for the rest of your life. <laughs> there you go. It's, it's a cliche with guitar right. players. When I was yeah. in when I was in junior high school. That was the song you had to know how to play. You know, if you picked up the guitar, there was going to be some dude with long hair yeah. and a Led Zeppelin T-shirt and going, "Dude, you know Stairway." Yeah, you know. So <laughs> yeah I, dude, I do. It, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I definitely know it, and uh, at one time or another, have known all the parts. But over the years, things uh, fade in and out. Yeah, so. sure. Well, you're into butterflies now, anyway. Yeah. So it's yeah. okay. Yeah, exactly. That's more important. Right. Well, I, I like to sit in the backyard and you know play play well, for them. And play for the butterflies. I was say yeah. they might like the sound and come be drawn to you. You yeah. never know. Um, yep. Okay, so it's opening day. That's no secret, and right. that's pretty exciting. I'm repping the San Diego Padres today. Are we baseball fans? Do we care about baseball? Yeah, we're Absolutely. Padres fans. Absolutely. I love it. I always say, if you can't root for the home team, get out of the stadium. Hey, get Ooh. out, girl. <laughs> yes, I love that. Have you always been baseball fans? Like, did either of you like play sports growing up, or? Um, you know, I, I really wasn't a baseball fan until I moved to San Diego. Okay. I mean, I've always kind of watched baseball on television. Yeah. Uh, when it's I was, not the same, though. No, no. But I, where I, I grew up in Central California, where there was no team, so it was either you know maybe the Giants or the Dodgers. Were, mm -hmm. I was kind of in between those two. Um, but when I moved to San Diego, uh, certainly got into to baseball yeah. and the Padres for sure. Love it. Well, Petco Park. Yeah, where are we right now? Is uh, yeah. A little over this way. Yeah. <laughs> Just over the building. Yeah, it, makes back there. it makes baseball so fun. Oh, oh yeah, it's, no, it's, okay. it's an amazing place, and and uh, I've. I've been sometimes Deva and and our younger daughter come come with us, but usually it's my son John and I go to baseball games together. Ever since he was a, a tiny little little toddler, did you ever take him to the park in the park behind? Have you done that before? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the first couple of years I took him to Padres games, all he wanted to do was ride the escalator, <laughs> <laughs> you know, go go up and down the stairs and see all the levels and stuff. And now now he wants to eat at the uh, the uh, Buffet there. That's mm. his, that's oh, they've his got thing. The ho dads in there too. Oh he yeah, ho dads. Yeah. Ho dads. Yeah. Nice. So much good food, drinks. Like yeah. you, there's just like you can pick what restaurant you want to go to basically while you're at the park enjoying yeah. a game. Like oh, it's, it's so cool. Yeah, the Taco Tuesday there is un amazing. Whatever. Really? The, I can't. It's uh, I think it's the Fish House that. Does yeah, it? forget I, the I name of the place. I could be wrong if I'm sorry if I said the wrong name, but yeah. it's amazing fish tacos. You got to wait in line for an hour, but you grab a beer, you wait in line, you drink your beer, you get your tacos, yeah. you go watch an amazing baseball game. Yep. Yeah, awesome. Yep. Cody loves to watch baseball. <clears throat> I don't know if he's ever told you, but he goes to the games just to sit down and watch every play play out. Unfortunately, that's a complete lie. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Padres, but. I like the environment. It's the environment yeah. of Petco Park, the yeah. vibe downtown. Yeah. Today, opening day is a little bit too much for me, so I don't mind being at work while everyone else is out partying, right, having right. fun. But I'll probably make it there with the kids this weekend. Yeah. Cool. We're awesome. having our own party yeah, today. Yeah, we have a party That's day. Right. Nice. So on the topic of sports or games, if you will, if you had to pick one game, like what would you say is your favorite? It could be a video game, card game, sports, like you name it. What's, what's your favorite game to play? Well, back in the old days, before we had kids, we spent a lot of time playing Grand Theft Auto. That's true. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hit us with the G T A. GTA. Yeah. 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 We went through, we made it all the way through a Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Um, so we probably spent a couple weeks just staying up late. And this was like 18 yeah. years ago. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that a single player game? We would, I think we, we would take we, turns. Yes. You know, okay. We would each try the mission and, That's you know, true. Level up. one of us would, yeah, would get yeah. it. So Yeah, this oh was my gosh. before the kids. Yeah. So, all right, so with GTA, because I grew up on GTA. <laughs> I didn't play it as much as you obviously did. Um, cause, uh, because, what was the game? What was the Army game that came out at the same time? I, oh, oh, there was I have Castle no Wolfenstein. No. There was, uh, I'm, so I, I'm, oh, I'm... I, 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 you to shame I, haven't right played, I haven't played video games in so long, pretty much since I moved to California, but... Um, with Grand Theft Auto, there was two type of people. There's two personas in Grand Theft Auto. There's the person that wants to do the missions, and then there's the person like me that just causes as much ruckus and sees how many mm. police officers you can get chasing you. Yeah. yeah. So which which one are you? Or we, we <laughs> depend were, on how late at night. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many glasses of wine came yeah. before that? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that does depend. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, last question before we get started. What's your guilty pleasure? I would have to say shoes. Okay. I love shoes, and yeah. I'm usually a pretty practical person, but yeah. I like to collect shoes. Like this vintage style shoe, I have so these in cute. many different colors. I won't admit how many, but yeah. probably shoes. I've got a closet full of them. And 
I went I to them. a Catholic grade school, like K through eight, and I literally had shoes just like that that I would wear <laughs> with my uniform. Like it's taking me back, and I love it. They're super cute. Wear them with like the cute. little folded socks. Oh you know yeah. What I mean? yeah. Like yep, yep. Were yours baby blue? They were not. We were not allowed. That I was did gonna not say. go with the uniform. <laughs> they had to be neutrals. Thank you. Beige, black, and gray. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Eric, what is your guilty pleasure? Um, well. Not shoes, or yes. <laughs> no, not not shoes. Probably. Uh, Dark chocolate is okay. is, the, is the one thing, and yeah. I, you know, I have to I have to really uh, manage myself on that because, of course, yeah, it's probably not the best thing for me. I have a sweet tooth as well. Yeah. What would you say your guilty pleasure is? What's like your go-to? Mm. I've never asked you that before. I don't know, actually. I think it's probably either pizza or cheeseburgers. I love, mm, I oh love, God. I love a good cheeseburger. A cheeseburger. Oh, cheeseburger. I mean, there's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, and I'm not the like stack all the ingredients on it. Like, no, no. if I'm going and I'm testing a place for the first time, yeah, cheese, burger, ketchup, maybe a little mustard or mayo, yeah, yeah. and a quality bun. Yeah, yep. the basics. And, that, that's what's yep. and then once I like it, I'll start exploring the menu. Right. That's so true. You just made me realize that's one of my guilty pleasures as well. The and, list keeps getting longer. Yeah, and me. I mean, me too. When I when I go to In and Out, what I usually order is a plain double double. So that's just meat, cheese, and bun. Sometimes I add grilled onions on there, and, and I always have a little packet of ketchup that I, I might put a little ketchup on it here and there. Easy, easy. In and Out's not one of our sponsors yet. No. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Good job, Eric. Out and about. Out and about. That's so good. Yeah. Guys, we're just getting started and we are having a blast. So if you like what you see, please click follow on our live feed so you can be notified when we go live. And don't forget, prove that you're watching. We'd love to hear from you. Just let us know we're doing an amazing job and you're highly entertained. Or drop us a question. We'd love to hear from you. So we're going to rock and roll here with Eric and Deva Edelman. They are Realtors with Century 21 Award. And you guys have the coolest story about oh, how you. you got into real estate. So I would love if we just started there and shared that with the audience. Okay. You want to go ahead, Eric? Sure. And you can jump in if I miss anything. I will. Um, okay. So <clears throat> we got to rewind all the way to, I guess, 2002. We bought a condo in North Park. Mm -hmm. That was the first place that we bought. When we moved to San Diego, we were pretty much fresh out of college. I had just gotten done with grad school and, and she with her... Uh, BS in uh, biology, right? And so we had jobs in our respective fields and we were working and the first place we rented was in Del Mar. And we rented it sight unseen from Humboldt County in Northern California where we lived. And when we got there, we were like, holy crap, look where we landed, <laughs> you know? What a place. Yeah. You know? I mean, my goodness. And it was west of the five. It's a little bit different than Humboldt, yeah? <laughs> yeah, it, it was. But at first, I was like, wow, it's it's overcast here a lot, because I was really tired of the, the rain and everything mm -hmm. up there. But it turned out to be very nice. Anyway, a few months later, we were like, OK, time to buy something. And you know, of course, we couldn't afford that at the time. What we could afford was a condo on the corner of El Cajon and, and Idaho Street in uh, North Park. It was behind a check cashing store, yes. a taco shop, and then also a card room. Yeah, so there's... And an alley oh. where lots of interesting things I happened. can imagine yeah. that was an interesting time, interesting <laughs> it, place, it right? Was. So, yeah, you take a couple of kids from, you know, small town Northern California and stick them right there. We were like, wow. Culture shock. Yeah. For, for sure. I had the local uh, beat cop on speed dial. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Uh, but, I mean, we could write a book about our two years there. But, I bet. But what happened there, of course, at the time, real estate was appreciating wildly. And things were changing with our jobs. And we suddenly became aware that, you know, because having a family was in our plan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, working her at her job and me at my job, we were both spending upwards of 50, 60 hours a week. We'd see each other a few minutes at night and, you know, in the morning, say, bye, you know, as you're kind of sleepily yep. stumbling out the door for work. And then on the weekends, and we're like, how are we ever going to, you know, get this family thing together if we're both, you know, doing this? And then you look at the income ceiling and you're like, I, we can't afford to live here even though we're, we're making decent money. Right. Um, so um, I started really exploring, like, what else can I do? And... Um, <clears throat> I started telling her, well, we should just start, you know, buying condos and selling them. Look mm -hmm. how much money we made on this place. Mm -hmm. And um, and she said, well, if, if you're going to, like, get interested in real estate, you have to do it right. You know, get a real estate license and figure it out and, you know, get, you know, really do it. 
And the so voice of reason. I was going to say, is that not like it. a typical woman's perspective? Like, you're going to do this the right way. He <laughs> has lots of ideas. Some are really good and some, you know, need a little yeah, I've, work. I've, <laughs> I've had a few ideas over the years that <laughs> haven't, haven't necessarily played out correctly. <clears throat> but so I came home one night with all the books because back then it was, you know, physical books. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, wow, you're really going to do this. And then her, her comment was, well, you know, if you're going to do this, then I'd, I'd like, you know, to also get my license. Let's do it together. Yeah, let's do it together. And um, we got our licenses in 2003 and pretty much started practicing full time in 2004. We just told our bosses, see you later. Again, we didn't have kids yet. So it was. You didn't have kids, but you literally both quit your jobs at the same time and just went all in. Yeah. I would imagine a lot of people would say, you're freaking crazy. Like, what were you thinking? Oh, right? yeah, we no, got some looks from yeah. our family. I yeah. bet. Yeah, people were, people were like, whoa, what are you doing? Like, one of you doesn't want to keep your job while the yeah. other one kind of figures it out. Like, you were both like, no, we are doing this, and it's sink or swim, right? It was, yeah. It was. It really was. And, uh, you know, we did, we did pretty well. You know, our first couple of years were... We didn't know anything was difficult. Yeah, and it's it's an interesting <laughs> uh, it's an interesting place to be when you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, and it it made for you know a lot of early um, victories. So the first couple of years were really good, and you know getting uh, agent of the month awards and just you know all sorts of. The accolades. market was hot back then too, so we you know we felt like we were you know new cool agents yeah. and we were really working it out, and we did for a while, and then yeah, yeah. Yeah. hit the it ground was, running for sure. For sure, and and so that was it was a lot of fun in the beginning. It really was, and then um, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean that's how we got in. Mm -hmm. I, I could keep I could keep on the timeline if if you want, or uh, you can ask other other. Uh, questions. I, have, I have two follow up questions. Okay. One, have you been by and looked at the corner of El Cajon in Idaho today? I I drive by that building a uh, fair amount. So the building's still there. The, yeah, it's it's a it's an eight unit condo building. Okay. And the funny thing about that building is it's, you know, there's a lot of these eight unit buildings in, mm -hmm. in that part of town and they were all built, you know, 78 through 82 and probably done with, inspected by the city inspector on a drive by just like, yeah, yeah looks, <laughs> looks good. Still there. There yeah. were all sorts of problems when we moved in there and we didn't know it. And, and this was another, our, our realtors that we worked with, you know, I don't know that they helped us that mm -hmm. much. But they didn't have a lot to work with. We qualified for, you know, in their defense, we qualified for like 175 grand at that point, and interest rates were, uh, I think, you know, nine or ten percent on the on the second, yeah. and seven or eight percent on the first. So it, you know, we were we were squeezing in there. And the first thing that happened when we moved in is I get a knock on the door, and there's a lady from upstairs that says, "Hi, welcome to the building. Do you want to be HOA president?" She has, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? She the whole box of all the paperwork yeah, she, yeah, and everything, she, she, too. She, she, was, she was, was ready to like, hand it off. She's like, I just bought a house. I'm moving out of here. You know, here you go. And and we realized at that point we had inherited a real mess. There but was then a, we were like, ooh, president. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We'll yeah. do it. You want yeah. us to do it? Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I was Update like, our LinkedIn. Oh, wait, that probably wasn't around <laughs> no, yet. No. no. Yeah, there was, computers, there was, but, yeah. Didn't even have MySpace back then. <laughs> <laughs> back in my day before MySpace. <laughs> no. um, so, yeah, we inherited kind of a, a problem there. There was just the building had a lot of problems. And uh, we, we got it. We got it turned around before we we sold and moved out of there, so it was the HOA was in reasonably good shape. And I drive by the building, and it still looks pretty similar. There's still the taco question? shop, the card room, all that there. So yeah. my next question is: You said you got into real estate 2003, started practice 2004. So yeah. the market was hot back then, super hot. But oh. Right. Oh my okay, gosh, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to go into too much detail because that's a bad memory for a lot of realtors. So how was that transition from hot to not? And then obviously where we are today. It was rough. And as well in 2006, when things kind of started to change, that's when we got pregnant. And mm, so we were, yes. you know, starting like a whole new chapter of our lives. And our business definitely changed as well. So Big if time. you want to talk about that. Yeah, that was, <clears throat> I mean, and I don't mind talking about it because it's, you know, it's a real thing that happened and it's a real yeah. thing that could happen again and, and will happen again eventually. Mm -hmm. If you look at the history of Southern California real estate, and I tell people this all the time, I don't know how much it registers, but... Um, you look at the middle part of America, the value curve is very nice and gentle. Mm -hmm. But if you look at San Diego or L.A. or anywhere over the last hundred years, it's serious ups mm -hmm. and downs, yeah. you know, very spiky curve. So, you know, we're going to go through something again at some point, whether it's, you know, this year or five years from now, we don't know. But um, in 2006, by 2006, we had gotten really good at taking listings. 
Um, we were working for sale by owners. We were working our neighborhood. You know, we had gotten really good at taking listings. And I think in 2006, we probably took 12 or 14. We, we took or, a bunch of listings. We took a bunch. And then all of a sudden, they weren't selling. Mm. And I'm like, what the heck's going on? You know, was, there was a formula before. List, sign, offer, sell, paycheck. You know, right. so you get very, a bunch of offers in the yeah, first it was, day or it so. Was a very, it was a very <coughs> quick cycle, you know, 30, 45 days, and it was, it was working. But then all of a sudden things didn't, weren't selling. And, you know, our office manager is like, well, you probably need to go ask the seller for a price reduction. And I'm like, oh, well, excuse what? me. <laughs> yeah. What is that? <laughs> and then, of course, you talk to your seller about that. <clears throat> and they're like, what's a price reduction? And why would I even be thinking yeah. about that? Yeah, right, so right. we were green. We didn't know how to respond to that. So and, and that's what happens to, you know, a lot of agents. Sure. You're, you're kind of like uh, deer in the headlights. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say it's not going to happen to me again because you you try and anticipate where things are going, uh, and at least now we've been through what what I think are you know pretty fair uh, representation of all the the spectrum of, of the market cycle. But in 2006, we had all these listings, spending all this money to market them, and they weren't selling. So as a consequence, we did very few deals that year. So we went from a lot of money to a little money. With a baby on the way. With a baby yeah. on the way and a mortgage, <clears throat> and that was that was the real. Uh, because we bought the big house, too, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. Right. We, we You're like, I'm killing yeah, it. We're, we're doing yeah. well. Yeah. Like we, we, The condo doubled our money. So, yeah. hey, yeah. let's just buy a big yep. house. Yep. And at the time, it was very <clears throat> easy to get into a house. We bought a house in Carmel Mountain Ranch, where we live now, that's just uh, east of I-15 off of Ted Williams Parkway. Oh, mm -hmm. there you, you go. know, between the 15 and Poway, basically. Is I'm just below you. I was say, you know well, that. Right down the street. So we've been there ever since we got our licenses. And... Uh, what was I saying? Okay, so yeah, the house, all of a sudden, it gets very difficult to, to make those payments and stack on top of that, we had gotten into one of those hanky mortgage products that mm -hmm. was available at the time, but everybody was doing it. It just yeah. seemed like the thing to do, it was yeah. easy, the payment was low, well, it was a formula for disaster. We managed for, for a lot of people. Yeah, for a lot yeah, of people. Oh my Definitely. gosh! But by 2010, that house was short sold. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was a real bummer. We were helping a lot of people doing that, though. Yeah. The way we kind of started to pull out of it was you got your uh, distressed property designated That's right, designation yeah. and started helping people do short sales. So we were meeting a lot of people that mm -hmm. were in the same situation as us and yeah. learning how to work through this and well, work with the banks. And right. But as much as that like really sucks, honestly, you are able to relate and truly you've been in someone's shoes who has gone through that. And yeah. That has to work to your advantage in a relatability standpoint, you know. Yeah. I'm not just this, you know, millionaire realtor preaching to you about how you screwed up and you should do it differently. You're really there to hold them, hold their hand through it and say, hey, we're yeah. going to get through this. Yeah. I get it, right? Right, yeah, right, been right. There too. I've, mm -hmm. I've actually had two of those conversations in the last week. I was going to ask, yeah. I mean, not that the sky is falling. No. Everyone has their different no, opinion on what's yeah. happening right, right now. Right. but. Obviously, the rate adjustment recently helps us. Yeah, the yeah price, that's a good. Prices coming down may be a good thing. Yeah. Um, but I imagine these questions are coming up. I mean, people are, do I buy right now? Do I wait? Mm -hmm. What's yeah. going to happen? Yeah, yeah. I, and and so, yeah, in the, last, in the last week, and this is what also tells me intuitively that things are changing, is that I'm, I'm, I'm having these conversations. Again, I don't think it's a coincidence that, you know, two people in the last week, I was on the phone with somebody yesterday, um, you know, for quite a while, um, about you know they're they're missing payments the home is falling into foreclosure you know I don't want to take this lower offer and you know you're you're that that's when I do kind of pull out and say look uh, I've been here and I've made the mistake mm -hmm. <laughs> that you're about to make mm -hmm. and I don't want to see you make it you know you've got because we could have sold that house in 2006 and and kept some of our money right. or you know it wouldn't right. have been everything that we put in right. but then we wouldn't have thrown you know however much money we threw at it from 06 through whenever and trying find, to save it trying to save yeah. it you know what's your home yeah, exactly your home. there was you're it's, emotionally it's, it's, very emotionally it's a very invested emotional as well as financially thing. And, and, and i yeah and so i am able to connect with that with, with people and share you know i've i've been here and it's tough i know but you got to make these tough decisions before yeah. you kind of screw up everything else mm -hmm. you know you, you got to salvage what you can if the home isn't working you know <laughs> let's get it off the table get yeah. it off your plate the yeah. one good thing that i hear you're saying though is that the fact that you have had those conversations mm -hmm. the last couple of weeks with everything that's going on and you can go online and find whatever you want you know you, yeah. get, a, you get a sniffle you go to <laughs> 
mddoctor.com or whatever. Next thing you know, yeah. you're, you're dying. dying. Yeah. So yeah. you have cancer. Yeah, Sorry. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Do I? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do. Are you telling me the truth? Yeah. <laughs> Says the internet. Yeah. So, but the one thing that gives me faith is that, especially with the younger demographic coming up and the millennials buying houses, that the fact yeah. that these questions are coming up. Because yeah. before, and I wasn't there, I'm living vicariously through the conversations that I have with realtors, people just kind of jumped in the boat. Yep. Yes. Even mm -hmm. at 9%, 10% interest rates, uh, whatever. You yeah. Know, yeah. Like, I'm, 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 I'm approved. Up up, yeah. So we're good. Let's yeah. do so it. Yeah. The good thing is that these, these questions are coming up. You know, people right. thought 5%, what, a month ago was way too high, and mm -hmm. they stopped buying. Oh, I can't afford that. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to wait. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna wait. and all the loan officers are sitting there going, like, I started doing loans at 9%. Like, what are you talking about? So, yeah, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm happy to hear that the consumer is having these questions, and it's great that you can have that relationship. I mean, your goal is to build a relationship with these clients. Yeah, and let's see an app do that. Yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what Absolutely. I tell people all the time because, you know, pe people are looking – I'm hearing all the time that, well, we've got, you know, disruptors in the industry like Uber and Lyft disrupted the taxi industry. You know, we're, we're ex you know, peop I'm, I'm hearing a lot about millennials don't want to deal with, you know, face-to-face -face interaction. They want to text. They want an app. But when it comes down to counseling somebody about a decision like that, mm -hmm. you really need a person who understands and can, you know, guide, guide them through. And it's the same whether whether you're talking about a short sale or a foreclosure or whether you're just talking about a repair request on a normal sure. transaction. You know, again, I my my, my go-to line is let's see an app do what I just did, you know, for you. I love yeah. it. It's yeah. it's um Every transaction is unique, and there are so many moving parts. You really yeah, yeah. need someone who's an expert to guide you through it. Right, and you know, I, 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 I have yet to see anything. You hear about how you know agents. We're gonna we're gonna take agents out of the equation somehow because we make too much money, or we're greedy, or whatever that the problem is with us. But when you get right down to it, you know that there is always, in my opinion, going to be a need for for a professional. In involved to help the, the person who sells mm -hmm. two homes in a lifetime versus, you know, 500 homes over a career. Well, a Absolutely. great testament to exactly <laughs> what you're saying is TurboTax. Ah. TurboTax has been, I mean, they completely impacted the market of doing your taxes. Go online, DIY, sit there and type, 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 type. Yeah. Do you, rem do you know what they released this past year for TurboTax? No. What you file your taxes. As you're filing your taxes, <clears throat> now you can talk live with a CPA oh. through the internet. I mean, yeah. you're, it's a face-to-face -face conversation. So right. the entire time, TurboTax is trying to upsell you. And if you get the top package, you get it for free. But my whole point of sharing that is this is a DIY product that completely impacted mm. the marketplace of doing yeah. your taxes. Yeah, yeah. And there are a bunch of copycat brands out there now. And fast forward to today, and what are they doing? Right back to the traditional. That personal touch. Mm -hmm. they're, exactly. they're still doing it, but the personal touch. You know, yeah, talking we, to them on the phone, yeah. talking to them face to face while you're doing your taxes, having that. Because as a consumer, like you can do all the research you want, but like you said, you're not yeah. doing this every day. This isn't your nine to five. You mm -hmm. haven't done it 500 times. Right. You file your taxes one time a year, right? right? So you can follow the steps and say, okay, I think I'm doing this correctly, but I want someone to sign off and go, yeah, girl, you got it. You did it right. Yeah. Like you're in the clear. It's Don't stress. Yeah, right? It's yeah, important. Right. That's your money. It is. It is. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And same with the greatest investment you're probably ever going to make in your lifetime, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yep. And that's. It's again, people are emotional about their homes. Mm -hmm. You know, every home I go into, I mean, the, the person, the, people are proud of the things that they've done. You yeah, know, of oh, course. look, even, even if it's a silly little thing, like, you know, I put in an LED light over the, over the sink here. You yeah. Know, people, people are proud of the things that they've, they've done to their homes and they get very attached to them. And it, it creates a sense of maybe my home's worth more mm -hmm. than, than another one. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it's it's uh, important to have the the experience and the and the uh, ability to talk to people about these things and and get them to see mm -hmm. the big picture. Yeah, from an objective perspective too. Exactly. Right, right, like right. right. Um, so let's talk about your business and its current state today. Sure. So the I-15 corridor <coughs> is kind of your hood, right? That's kind of where you focus the business. Yes, we find ourselves here and there, but mostly I-15 <laughs> corridor is where we work. Uh, you know, Rancho Bernardo, Poway, Rancho Penasquitos, Carmel mm -hmm. Mountains, Scripps Ranch. Mira yeah. Mesa. Mira Mesa, Escondido, yes. Escondido, yeah. That's where we have four listings in Escondido right now. So Amazing. that's kind of our yeah, spot yeah. at the moment. But. Okay. Yep. yep. There's uh, 
one one that's currently on the MLS and and three more three more on the way oh. in the next Ooh, couple of weeks. Oh, Cody's ears are perking up. Yep. I already know. Uh, <laughs> looks like you're going to be back Coming on Listed soon Live. Coming soon on Listed <laughs> Live. You get those photos. Yeah, yeah, I've got today at noon thirty. Yep. <laughs> oh, and we're getting some love from Clay and Fatu. Hi, uh, Fatu. I know that's you. She said I really enjoy hearing the connection in a person. It's incredibly value, especially with major life decisions. Thanks for mm. commenting. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that feedback. Um, tell us a little bit about the dynamic. Like, how do you two work as a team together? What does that look like? Okay, well, I spend a lot of time at home because we've got the kids, and I actually homeschool them two days a week, and they go wow. to a charter school three days a week. So I'm always behind my computer, like kind of managing, managing the kids, and yeah. I've got the cats down here, and I'm, I work on um, our marketing, and I maintain our database, and just kind of overall help things stay organized. Okay. And then Eric is the one who's most of the time out there working yeah. with clients, showing <laughs> properties. He handles, you know, the paperwork and the transactions. Yes. And I kind of, you know, am at home doing my thing. Although I do come out, I like to do staging con consultations with our clients. Um, when the photographer comes out, I like to come if I can and just make sure that everything is happening, you know, mm -hmm. as it's Give it that to. personal touch. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, and don't yeah. forget about the butterflies. You I was going to say, if you need to know how to bring butterflies <laughs> yeah. to yeah. your home, <laughs> Dave has got you there, I too. I got it, yes. So you're clearly the creative in the operation. Yes, I would I would. Charter so. school, which one? Uh, it's the Learning Choice Academy in Scripps okay. Ranch, so you might know where it is. It's in a business park over by the lake. But, yeah. I have a five-year-old, so we're we're going through the... What do you call it? The, he interviews the all of our guests on where their children go to school. Oh. It's, a, it's huge. It's a huge it decision. Is. It is. This yeah. is our seventh year at this school, so I, we like it there. Yeah. Kudos. You'll be hearing from me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll give you, I don't know, Maybe, some yeah. kickback for the, yeah. for the promo, right? <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool. Also, like your kids are getting kind of like the best of both worlds from a schooling perspective. Like you get yeah. that personalized touch from the family and someone who really has your best interest, but you also get to do like the social, normal school aspect, right? Yes, and yeah. they've got their you know, professional teachers that they learn things from, and then we come home and we build on it. So I it works out that. pretty well. That's really cool. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your YouTube channel, because I know that's something that you play a big role in and that is important to your business. So why did you start your YouTube channel, and what are some things that we can find on there? Okay, well, Eric started the channel many years ago, yes. so the channel's been around for a while. I took it over a couple of years ago, and, you know, they tell you video is what you're supposed to be doing. So we started doing it, and I actually, I really like it. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I love being on camera as much, although I'm fine with it, but I like editing the videos, just, okay. you know, getting out my video software and mm -hmm. playing with different, you know, cuts and transitions and things, and so that's kind of fun for me. Um, and we've got, you know, a section for tips for homeowners, tips for home sellers, uh, market updates. We do a market update every month. Okay. So we'll get out the most recent numbers for what's going on in the, in the housing market and talk about, you know, what they are and what that means for the market going forward. And in some of the special videos, you can see the kitties in the background. <laughs> that just really tickled me. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, it's, it's really impressed me over the last couple of years because, like she said, I, I started the YouTube channel, I think, in 2008. I went to a, a Tom Ferry summit, and Gary Vaynerchuk mm -hmm. is, you know. We love Gary V. Everybody well, does. I, yep. I, think, I think the speech that he gave at that summit was probably one of the first that he ever did. It was an expletive-laden, you know, tirade about, yep. about social media. And Does it was, Gary V know any know any other way? I, I don't know. No. Probably, I, the I, answer I, is no. To be to be honest, I I mean I, I followed him for a while after that, and you know you get busy with other things. Sure. But um, that really inspired me to get on the bandwagon. I went I went back from that conference, and I created a profile on every social media platform I could find. You know there was Flickr and Tumblr and all these ones that nobody is on anymore or maybe they are and I just don't know it but I thought it was very important that I get you know Eric Edelman at Twitter and I get YouTube you know basically trying to protect the name mm -hmm. you know, get, get Edelman mm -hmm. anywhere you can and so for many years I would just record a YouTube video whenever something came up and I wasn't polished I wasn't um, so if you go to that channel and search back through the history you're gonna find from 2008 until now 10, 10 years of videos and most of them probably <laughs> aren't worth watching. I mean, I used I used to put uh, like the camera. I had a mount on my dashboard. I'd talk while I was you know mm -hmm, driving in mm -hmm. the car. I was like, why were you driving and talking at the same time? It You're wasn't illegal back that, then. But <laughs> yeah. Well, it was ha I was hands free. <laughs> but there was but I didn't have any. I didn't edit really or or anything. But since since she's taken over, the the videos have become way more polished, and I can see now that um, 
doing things in a much shorter format as far as conveying information, like mm -hmm. two, three minutes and, and you're out mm -hmm. versus, you know, me rambling on for 10, 12, 12 minutes about yeah. something. So. Well, we are here with Eric and Diva Edelman, and they are Realtors with Century 21 Award. Don't forget, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to drop them below. And you can find them at edelmans.com. That's right. right. Really That's right. straightforward, edelmans.com. Um, what would you say makes the two of you unique? Why, why, why would someone want to work with you? What are they getting? That's a good question. Well, <laughs> I think we work really well together. We yeah. both have good strengths. Um, if one of us is strong in one area, you know, one might be weaker in the other area. So we definitely play on each other's strengths. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of experience, as we've talked about. And also, we really we know a lot about houses. We love, you know, looking at houses and working on our own houses. Yeah. We've renovated, you know, several houses on our own. So if we're showing a home to someone, we can spot things that maybe someone else can't or okay. working through the transaction. Right. Um, you can talk more about that. Well, uh, a, a showing with me is more like a mini physical inspection. You know, <laughs> I, I'm not the guy that's going to be like, oh my gosh, look at this wonderful <laughs> kitchen or look at how much space you have. Mm -hmm. Sorry. You're fine. You have here or what I'm, I'm looking under the sink. I want to know if those shutoffs are crusty. I want to know if yeah. the water heater, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at all the mechanicals, the things that are really going to cost the electric money. panel. That's the one of your oh, favorite. God, yeah. yeah, the electrical. That's panel. what I want, though, from yeah. a real estate agent. Yeah. Like, I want someone who's looking at that stuff that I don't think to look look at. Right, because buyers don't look at those kinds of things mm -hmm. when they're looking at a house. They're very um, visual, cosmetic, mm -hmm. and you emotional. Know, yes, exactly. emotional. And I walk a, a lot of the homes that I walk into the last couple of years are flips. This is a, a big thing and mm -hmm. you know, bless them, the flippers are, are doing great work. However, you know, when you're when you're flipping a house, you're trying to, you know, make the profit as yeah. much as you can. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you're, you're saving money and you know I've, I've learned to try and get buyers to look past the brand new quartz mm -hmm. countertop and, and actually look under the sink. Mm -hmm. did, did they really, mm -hmm. did, did they just you know put lipstick on a pig or did, right. they, did they do a good job here? Right. So there's that aspect and I mean we started with home renovation it was kind of a a crash course the same way we got into real estate. It almost. was the same house that we bought you right, know, before this, the market started yeah, this, to go this down. This Carmel Mountain Ranch house that <coughs> had these, you know, four inch white tile countertops. Oh, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and you know, and our, our, our friend at the time, this this loan officer who's retired now, this guy Bob Jones was a great guy that we met when we first started with McMillan Realty. We were talking to him one day at the office. Well, you know, we just bought this house and ugh, the kitchen is just <laughs> awful and he, he knocked on our door later that night and he handed me a sledgehammer <laughs> and he said, get to work, boy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And so we were like, all right, we just started tearing out the kitchen. I mean, we tore that kitchen out and then we Was were it like, a little fun? Oh, 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 my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a ton of fun. But yeah. then, then you realize, oh, my God, I've got You're all like, of this. What did I do? Yeah, there was <laughs> definitely some of yeah. those moments. Not only do I not have a kitchen, but how am I going to get rid of all this? I mean, because those countertops, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just the tile. There's cement underneath. And, and so anyway, we started to learn how things are put together. And and that was before YouTube videos. You can't, oh, you know, yeah. now gosh. you can just look well, at YouTube videos. for whatever they you want. Well, not his videos. They weren't before his videos. But you couldn't just, you know, yeah, you couldn't YouTube, yeah, you know, right. how to redo your counters. Right. You had to go get books. And, and figure it out from right. the book. So. And, and so really over the years have learned, you know, how are things put together and how much is it really going to take to fix something? Because, I mean, I hear again, you hear it from buyers all the time. Oh, this kitchen, it's going to cost me $50,000. Mm -hmm. Probably not. You know, it's maybe some countertops and some cabinets, but, you know, it's it's there are a lot of really inexpensive things that you, that you can do to make your house a whole lot better. And the same thing for sellers. You know, sellers are always asking, do I need to update the bathrooms or the mm. kitchen? And, you know, when you're selling, there are definitely some quick, easy, inexpensive things you can do to make things pop that, that you know, are, are reasonable things to do. Sure. Not just trying to cover up problems, but, you know, improve things in a way mm -hmm. that doesn't cost you a lot of money on the way out. So I think that kind of makes me unique in the field and, and the way that we work together um, as a team is, I, I think, unique in the, in the business as well. Do you know what I love most about them? They literally are not afraid of any project. They just go all in. <laughs> yeah. They're like, sledgehammer, yeah, let's go. We don't yeah. know, but we'll do it. We'll figure it out. Well, and another thing Real that, estate, let's both do it, fine. Yeah. Another thing that's very <laughs> lovely is that, like you said, you use the, the metaphor of doing a physical. I mean, yeah. that's just as powerful for your mm -hmm. seller as well because I know if I'm a buyer's agent, I'm coming in, I'm looking under the countertop. So you yeah, can prepare yeah. your sellers for somebody, get out in front of it. Right. You, know, you hear stories all the day, all the time about, 
you know, hey, maybe you get an inspection before you sell the house so you can yeah. get prepared. So it's like, here's how much the new water heater is going to cost. It's not $15,000 off the purchase price. Right. Right. You know? So right. it's great. You can prepare both sides. On the buyer side, you're letting them, you're helping yeah. them negotiate a lower price. On the selling side, you're preparing them for what they're going to face when it comes time to selling that home. That's exactly. right. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for summarizing it. Very, very <laughs> I'll succinctly. write that down Good for job. you. you Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah I, need, I need a script. <laughs> so where can we find the Edelmans when you're not working? What do you like to do? Um... At, at home a lot. <laughs> we like to, yeah, yeah. We, we, you know, we don't get out a whole lot, so we like to have a, you know, couch dates. We'll watch some Netflix. Or, yeah. You know, well, lately. like, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, um, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, like thurs Thursday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are what we call our sort of weekend party Those are nights. Our party nights. <laughs> so tonight it'll be, um, you know, martinis on the couch trying to find something on on Netflix. Yes. Or if we so can't, so I should be by around seven. Right. Absolutely. Like, yeah, we just found two best friends. <laughs> and, that's, and that's an important thing to point out. We we love when people come over, you know, and have have one or two with us, you know. Be careful, you know, not not to drive home. We, we, we have a little breathalyzer for you. We do, actually. <laughs> she, she got me one of those for Christmas. You guys are getting cooler by the second. I'm Ubering to your house, so you know what's coming. It's, um, <laughs> it's funny. You've, you've heard of, I'm sure you've seen Trailer Park Boys, or you've we've seen them. That, that's kind of a... That's, it, Who's laughing over there? It's, it's probably what I should have said when you asked about a guilty pleasure. We, we've, you know, admittedly been through that series, I think, three times. Yeah. <laughs> and we've seen all the movies. Yeah, yeah. More than and once. And there's, there's a couple of episodes where the where Mr. Leahy's walking around with a breathalyzer to try and keep himself just in that place before he's too drunk to, you know. Oh, point one two, gosh. I think, yeah. is right in the pocket. Yeah, that's oh, what he calls yeah. right gosh. in the pocket. You can't drive at point one two, folks. No, no, but if no. you're just at home, that's yeah. you know, yeah. a reasonable it's place fine to be. At home. It's a sweet spot at home. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Do you ever bust out GTA anymore? I just want to know. No. We, Get I back feel on like the I, they're li They look at each other. They're lying. <laughs> well, well, I, I, we, I think we looked at each other because our son, our son has it in his room now, and sometimes we, he's, he's playing it sometimes. That's and awesome. It's, from the, it's on yeah. the old Xbox, so the, yeah. the graphics aren't good yeah, like we, today. So yeah. we kind of feel it's like maybe that, that's that okay. That old disc works in his new. Xbox. Yes, that's still the so old yeah. one that we used to play. You ever like want to go in there like you're doing it wrong? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Give me Blue that. Let me show you how it's done. <laughs> to, to be honest, I, I doubt I could remember all the. Uh, it, it would take me a I while think, to get back. I up think to it speed. would come back pretty quickly. Maybe, maybe it would. Maybe if it's you like put the controller in my hand, I'd be like. We <laughs> 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 got Bennett. 50 cops in a helicopter chasing me. <laughs> right. Cancel right. my appointments. I'm playing yeah, GTA right. today. Yep. Oh, oh awesome. my gosh. Well, we have had so much fun chatting Thank with you. you both today. We are about to wrap up, so I just want to make sure uh, we can kind of summarize the information we've shared today. And if the audience is going to take away like one golden nugget, what do you want them to remember? Um, if you have a question about real estate, call us. I mean, I, I'm responding to texts and emails and phone calls anytime I'm not asleep, basically. I think that's the consumer is hesitant to contact an agent because they think they're going to be sold. Yep. Um, I'm not going to sell you. I'm just I'm going to try and help you with whatever whatever the question is. So, call us. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Who you work with is so important, and you could spend months with your agent, right? So yes. you want to you know have somebody that you can relate to and who you know has your best interest in mind. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, once again, if you'd like to contact Eric and Deva Edel Edelman, you can find them at theedelmans.com. I keep changing the way I say your last okay. name, but That's we're just right. going to rock and roll with it. Uh, and this has been San Diego Market Movers on Real Talk San Diego, bringing you the business of life in America's finest city. It's opening day, so if you're going, have a blast. Uh, we will miss you, uh, but we'll be back with Listed Live at 1230. Signing off, please go love everyone. I'm Claire McKee. That's Justin Cody Warden. We'll catch you later.